25%. It's about 25% weapon speed. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. Today, I want to give an update on my progress building my new 3 pound combat robot Division version 3, and where I've gotten in the last two weeks since my design overview was filmed. This video will focus on the robot's mobility and electronics, as there are some very unique features to both of those systems. Now that I have Division able to drive, Though the weight distribution is really off due to lack of metal parts, I have a way better idea what the driving dynamics will be like in the real version, and I can make some on-the-fly adjustments. Once again, I'm prototyping everything in cheap 3D printed plastic so I can iterate super fast and keep making changes until I find a solution I'm willing to commit to metal. I also am going to mill the chassis out of a single giant block of aluminum, and this part will be the single heaviest part of the robot, so I need to make absolutely certain that it is dead on before I make it. I also want to talk a lot about my drivetrain solution in this video, as it borrows heavily from my other 3 pound robot shrapnel mine, which I've covered in previous videos. But I'm always getting new viewers, and not everyone watches every single video, so I'll talk all about it in this one. If you want to keep up with my progress, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon, as I'll be making a series of these videos about this build and all upcoming robots. The next video will probably focus more on the subtleties of self-riding with the weapon, and the various geometric features that I'll need to add in order to ensure the bot's stable while driving, but still able to get back onto its wheels if it's flipped. Also, make sure to check out my Instagram for some behind-the-scenes content throughout the week. First off, though, what were the biggest causes of failure in the past? As Division is a two-wheeled bot with exposed wheels, there isn't a whole lot that I can do to win a fight if I ever lose a wheel or a drive side. There were several causes for having this happen in different fights in the past. I'll ignore the fights of the earlier version 2 revisions before version 2.7 when I switched to a brushless drive solution. There were a few fights, such as against Bison, where a direct hit to a wheel simply removed it. There were also a couple more violent ones against Eruption, and also Blackbird. In these cases, the entire 3D printed gearbox housing was destroyed or the bot was otherwise immobilized from other mechanical failures. In one fight that was particularly brutal, a horizontal spinner pried the sides off of the bot entirely because I was configured to fight a vertical spinner, and this was a modular robot. There were two or three instances where I lost a drive side due to pinion gears slipping on my motor shafts in my previous brushless solution. There were also a few of what I would consider to be easily preventable failures, where a drive side died when the signal or motor wires got caught up in the spinning outrunner can. See my fight against Honeycomb in February of 2021. And then again against Sepiol in July of 2021. There were also a couple fights in which I simply had a wheel fly off because the hub was hot glued on and it didn't stick well enough. You can see this happened in my most recent recap video at Sword. Other than those last two failure modes, I think all those other issues are attributable to the 3D printed gearbox design that I had before. It isn't a flawed design, but it really just couldn't take a solid direct hit without dying. Granted, the failures were really cheap because it was never the gears themselves or the drive shafts that were breaking, but those repairs were incredibly time consuming and laborious, and it wasn't something I could feasibly do in the middle of the event. On a robot with two wheels, losing one wheel or the ability to turn is almost a death sentence. Plus, it goes against the entire point of Division to let any fights go to the judges, so I want full mobility and the weapon spinning 100% of the time. Division is meant to make for short, explosive, violent matches, with one or both robots getting wrecked. Having a bulletproof drivetrain in combat robotics is an incredibly difficult task, but I think that I'm getting there. Drivetrain Design Shrapnel Mine was the next Beetle that I designed after Division. Shrapnel Mine is again a 3 pound beetleweight robot, 
but unlike Division, it was designed as a control-focused robot, with a weapon that functions more like Sawblaze's hammer saw than like a true vertical spinner. It was designed with a ton of drive power and wheels that I wanted to never have to replace. To make it so the wheels never came off, I run them on a steel quarter-inch shoulder bolt dead axle. This would need to unscrew itself or destroy the entire motor mount and shaft support in order for a wheel to actually come off. I've tried to do this, and have failed. In order to get tons of drive power, I dished the 1806 brushless motors I used in Division V2 in favor of Emacs 2205 motors. However, I ran shrapnel mine at 2S or about 8 volts because the servo running its arm will die at any higher voltage. Division, meanwhile, operates at 4S, which is about 16 volts. Since the 2600 kV 2205 motors would be at a ludicrous 43,000 revolutions per minute at 4S, I opted to switch to Zheng E-Pro 1700 kV motors. From 2 inch wheels to 1.75 inch wheels, and there will be a 48 tooth gear on the wheel with a custom machined hardened steel 11 tooth gear on the motor shaft for a total reduction of 4.36 to 1, which provides way more torque to the wheels and makes the speed a little bit more manageable. Division will still be geared such that if it was at 100% throttle, it could theoretically do more than 30 miles an hour. I'm not using planetary gearboxes because these are heavy and expensive, but the higher reduction would have some major benefits. I'm using bigger and 14 gram heavier motors than the 1806s from Yor, but ditching a 40 gram gearbox in favor of less than 12 grams of gears. Division's wheels will weigh a further 25 grams or so, with a basically indestructible TPU hub and cast urethane rubber tires for serious grip. Not only is this lighter, but it's way cheaper, and rather than a gearbox where any number of failures could occur inside, there's just the shaft, the wheel, and the two gears to worry about. I also have designed and am getting manufactured 100 pinion gears, custom for this application, which I plan to sell to anyone else interested in making a similar drivetrain, or who just wants a high quality hardened steel pinion gear that'll fit on any 5mm shaft motor. I haven't gotten these yet, so for the moment I'm using an RC car pinion, but mine will be the exact length of the motor shaft, so I have even better tooth engagement. It should work with any M5 threaded shaft like you see here, or any 5mm smooth shaft motor like I used for the weapon, and they will use an M4 set screw to attach to the shaft. This will be a standard 0.8 mod or 32 pitch gear tooth profile, which can work with any off the shelf gear or a 3D printed one as well. I'll figure out pricing once I have them on hand. Let me know if you're interested in the comments. That said, I know planetary gear motors are sort of the standard tried and true solution for beetle weights, and I've got something in the works for more traditional builders too. But I digress. What good is a motor without a speed controller to drive it? Division version 2 used Hack RC 35 amp BL Heli 32 ESCs for drive. These have a ton of tuning and adjustability built into them. One great feature that BL Heli 32 has, which the older and crappier BL Heli S and older revisions lack, is the ability to set custom acceleration limits and partial braking. This lets you tune in the starting and stopping of the wheels to be nice and fluid, rather than it being incredibly jerky either on or off. I'm going to show the difference here with BL Heli S ESCs that are stuck with max instant acceleration and braking fully on. Now compare this to how the bot handles with BL Heli 32 ESCs, with only a 45% braking and a limit for max acceleration. Take it from me, this is much easier to control, much easier to drive in a straight line, and much easier to make repeatable turns. I still need to practice though. The secret to my success with Division's drivetrain will be the same as the secret to my success with shrapnel mines, using cast urethane tires. I've already made an entire video tutorial showing this process, so I'm just going to show a quick time lapse of it while I talk about it. Two notes though, in my tutorial video, which was almost two years ago, I used a liquid dye which can actually dilute the mixture and affect the curing. Instead, now I use a solid mica powder pigment, which looks way better and it can't affect the curing as much. I'm also using Vitaflex 30A because there is a global urethane supply shortage and the 40A stuff is completely out of stock, but I found 30A is even grippier and softer, but still plenty durable to take hits from beetle weights. Otherwise, just watch that video for all of the details. The wheel hubs that I tested with at first were printed in PETG, and I used a cheap silicone rubber from Amazon because it's a little bit easier to work with and easier to clean up, but because that silicone cures into a far softer and less durable rubber, it was able to stretch out of the hub and fly away. 
So after making that test just to make sure my molds kind of got the general shape correct, I ended up casting the real ones with this beautiful orange urethane mixture. I made this as a one part mold, and you could probably do it a lot cleaner with a two part mold and a tight fitting lid, but that might be something that I deal with in the future. I'm casting these onto TPU hubs because TPU or thermoplastic polyurethane is incredibly squishy and unbelievably hard to actually break. In order to make it so I can actually drive the wheels effectively, I am screwing a nylon or in this case carbon fiber nylon 3D printed gear directly into the hub with two steel screws, which will always guarantee that torque is transferred. So I won't have the same problem I had with Shrapnelbine, where a tiny little hex can shear and make it so that the gears don't drive the wheels anymore. If the receiver is like the brain of the robot, then I guess that means that the electrical system is like its entire vascular or nervous system. The electrical wiring of a robot is incredibly important and one of the most often overlooked parts when building a bot, but it can easily be the difference between a win and a loss. I've got a drive system and I've got a weapon system, but I need to make sure that they can get power and stay powered throughout a fight, surviving huge impacts and violent collisions. In order to ensure that this will happen, I've designed a custom power distribution PCB or printed circuit board for division in collaboration with my channel sponsor PCBWay. Leave a comment if you think you know what this phrase is a reference to, by the way. PCBWay is a great place to go if you ever need a custom board manufactured. They even offer PCB assembly services, which I plan to make use of in the future for a bigger project. You simply upload your board design and get a quote within seconds, and then order and boards get to your door in a couple weeks time. They are based out of Shenzhen, China, so knowing that the pandemic has a bunch of supply issues currently, you might want to order ahead of time if anything that you're getting from them is time sensitive. Still though, they also offer a CNC fabrication service, which I used for my bot shrapnel mine, and those parts came out amazingly in 7075 aluminum. I've seen plenty of other fellow builders using this service to get machined steel and aluminum parts for their bots, and heard of plenty of satisfied customers. They're competitively priced, but again, make sure to order well ahead of time, because there are frequent shipping delays and machining orders take a lot longer than PCB fabrication. Full disclosure, PCBWay made 25 of these PCBs for me for free. I'm going to keep 5 for my own use, and I can sell the other 20 to you guys as a limited edition merch item. So any of you fans who want to own a part of Division that will actually be inside of the actual robot, you can buy a part for yourself and help fund the cost of building the rest of this robot to make Division better than ever. Every PCB will come with a signed thank you from me personally, plus you'll get exclusive Just Cause stickers that you can only get from either ordering from my store or meeting me in person at an event. I'm selling these boards for $10 each plus shipping, and I expect they'll sell out fast, so make sure to order soon. This will be the only time you can get this PCB. Once they sell out, that's it. But if this goes well, I'll probably do a similar offer for other small parts like the titanium forks and such. Back on topic. This PCB will allow me to run a similar amount of power as 16 AWG wires would, but with a far slimmer profile and no worry of the wires getting caught in the weapon. It also saves space and weight with the integrated PCB switch, which I also sell as a standalone product by the way. I've previously used the Fingertech switches in Divisions version 1 and 2, which are expensive to ship here to the US from Canada, and they cost more than my PCB switch, though admittedly Fingertech's version is a bit smaller and lighter than my standalone board. Still, the compactness of my solution being baked into this already existing board eliminates extra wiring and saves space and weight overall. I have the ability to directly solder XT30U connectors to the board, or run short wire leads off of the board to those connectors, and those will have four connectors, one for each of the two drive speed controllers, one for the weapon speed controller, and one of course for the battery. You'll also note that on both sides of the board are three pin connectors. These take the signals from the receiver on the left side of the robot and communicate them to the drive speed controller on the right side of the robot. You'll also note there are two extra little pins or pin holes where I can directly connect a BEC which will get power from the battery again on the opposite side of the robot. I used to be running wires underneath the robot in versions 1 and 2 and that was a terrible solution, very kludgy, and obviously pretty frickin' risky since a single strike to the bottom of my robot could have shorted my battery or just cut power to the entire thing all at once. 
It was also putting a lot of strain on the signal wire from that right side drive speed controller because it could barely reach all the way across my 9 inch wide robot to the receiver on the left. I also might switch to using these smaller FS2A receivers, but I am running into a few issues with those which I might talk about in a future video. I think that's everything division related that I've got for you for today. However, if you're watching this on Sunday or any time after, that means that you can now watch on YouTube the very first fight from my BattleBots team retrograde of the 2021 BattleBots Season 6. Make sure to check it out at the link in the video description. Hopefully it's out by now anyway. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos that'll cover more info about BattleBots or about Division, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified about future uploads. If you liked this video, click like. If you didn't like it, well, the dislike button doesn't do anything anymore, so it sucks to be you. And as always, thanks for watching.